Stephanie Mills sings in her song, Home, Feeling Love and Affection. Hey D2I, this is Tanya. And Jasmine. We live in Virginia and to us, home means love. Home means family. D2I family. Home is a place where I can feel safe and secure without having no worries. That's what home means. church you know what it is i'm wallace and i'm crystal and we want to welcome you back to service with dare to imagine church if this is your first time we want to connect with you to connect all you have to do is visit d2ic.org forward slash connect also this weekend is memorial day weekend so we want to honor those who have lost their lives for our freedoms yes thank you <laughs> and with freedom in mind we want to remind you that PA primary elections are right around the corner, so remember to get out the vote. Yeah, so as a matter of fact, go ahead, write down in the comment box, drop, I will vote. <laughs> right, because your vote matters. And I get an amen. 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 <laughs> well, it looks like no way in the team is ready to get started, but before we kick it over to the praise team, don't forget to check back with us after service. We have Pastor KJ joining us. All right, let's get to it. Goodbye to my fear. You're not welcome here. 
good for pain. You're gonna have to go away. So long, say. So long. So long, say. So long, say. Say you are the God. You are the God of miracles. You are the God of wonders. I believe, I believe, I believe. Say, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Come on, somebody worship the Lord. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. My name is Kevin Johnson. I'm privileged to serve as the lead pastor here at Dare to Imagine Church. And I want you to know that God is using us in a mighty way. This past week, we were over in South Philadelphia, and we blessed police officers there at the 17th Police District with masks. And so we're so thankful to God how he's using us. Watch this video right now so you can see how God is using us to bless others. clap right now. We thank God for what he's doing and for how he's blessing here at Dare to Imagine Church. I want you to get ready now to, to be used by God in a mighty way, and that is through giving. I encourage you to give the way that I give, and that is via push pay. And just before you do that, I want to share with you some exciting features that we have here on our app. If you just go right here to our app, you will be able to have access not only to uh, giving, but you can also have access to all of our free content my Bible studies are here. We have resources for children where you can teach them the word of God right here online, right here from our app. And then you can just stay connected with us. You can submit a prayer request. We want you to know everything is right there on the app. And all you have to do is a text D2I Church app to 77977. Let's get ready to give and bless God through our giving. Oh, come on, everybody, clap those hands.
I mean, can we just go back to that island field just a little bit? No way. Come on. Come on. Stand up where you are. Yes, and amen. It is so. It is so. Come on, watching online. Say, say yes and amen. Let me hear you say yes. Yes and amen. Every promise from God is yes and amen. It is so. It is so. It is so. One more time. Let me hear you say, say yes. God is with you. Say yes, and amen. We agree with God. Yes, and amen. Oh. It is so. It is so. Come on, clap your hands. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all just got your workout for the day. Amen. Amen. So we praise God uh, so much for each and every one of you. And beloved, I want you to know I love you all so much. I miss you all. It just pains me just to talk to this camera, but I thank God that our YouTube viewers are grow going up, that our Facebook viewers are going up, and matter of fact, you're sharing right now, you're starting watch parties, and we thank God for what he is doing. I want you to know that folk are watching all the way from Brisbane, Australia. Come on, let's give God praise. Amen. God is helping us to reach the masses. We thank God for what he's doing. And you don't even know how God is using us in a mighty way. Also, beloved, this past week we were over in Camden, New Jersey. And we went over to the Little Rock Baptist Church. And we blessed this great preacher, this great pastor, Pastor Stephen Mack. And I want you to watch this video and see how God is using us to bless others through our giving. So I came in June of 2015, okay. so this, it was the church's 100th okay. year. And I came, I asked for a finance report, and they had a $78,000 total budget. Total budget, $78,000. Yeah. And Little Rock went through a period where, for years without a pastor. Yeah. Um, and quite honestly, we're kind of counted out. you yeah. <laughs> during this COVID-19 season. Uh, Pastor G. Lamar Stewart has talked a great deal about you. Good bro. And um, so I kind of said to myself, said, man, you know, let me know some people who we need to, to bless. And so it's you, oh, <laughs> Pastor Matt <laughs> and Little Rock. So oh, thank you for you. Thank you so much. And a thousand dollars from uh, so Dare to Imagine. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So to you and, and Little Rock. Thank and, you. I'm so appreciative of the work that's being done in Dare to Imagine. I thank God that uh, it's a church that is about advancing the kingdom of heaven. Uh, and I'm so grateful to Pastor Johnson uh, for this opportunity. Uh, and thank you so much. God bless you. Awesome. Again, congratulations. You Proud so of you, brother. Yes, sir. It. Keep up the good work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Awesome. Thank you. Come on and give God a praise again. Amen. Amen. We thank God for what he's doing. And I just want to share with you right now 
that it's now time for us to continue to give to expand the vision. I shared with you that God really placed from my heart that he was going to use us to help other churches to be able to get the technology that they need. And as you can see there with Pastor Mac, that they don't have a camera, they need a camera, so we're going to be helping them. And so I'm going to encourage you now to give to expand the vision. All you have to do is to text D to our church app to 77977, and you will get the link. And then I want you to use the category of expand the vision. Let us give now to the glory of God. You can, yes, Lord. I know you will, yes, Lord. Find my battle, yes, Lord. Find to keep still, yes, Lord. So Lord. Come on, put those blessed day. hands together one more time. Come on, say, Jesus, Jesus, be all around. Lord. I know you will yes, Lord. fight my battle, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord. The all around me Come on, let's make this declaration. Come on, let's stand and let's give God praise where you are at home. God, we thank you right now for these gifts. God, let them be used for the further building of thy kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen. To the good, good Father, the good, good Father, we declare. Oh, I heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like. And I've heard tender whispers of love in the dead of night. And they tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, who you are. It's who you are, who you are. It's who you are. I'm loved by you, say it's who I am, who I am, it's who I am, who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, who you are, and I'm loved by you. Look. 
Stand up on your feet at home. All things new, yes, you. Come on and sing that. All things new, and I will follow you forward. Come on and share with me, amen. God, we thank you right now. We thank you, oh God, for what you're doing. God, we thank you for your spirit. God, we thank you for your anointing. God, be with me now as I get ready to prepare to preach this word and, God, share with your people. God, we know that you make all things new. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you believe it, come on and clap your hands right now. Amen. Amen. We thank God so much for each and every one of you. And we thank God for what he's doing here at Dare to Imagine Church. Amen. Amen. Praise God so much for each and every one of you. Beloved, we thank God for what he's doing here at Dare to Imagine Church, and I thank God for each and every one of you. I am just beyond thankful uh, for how God continues to move in this season uh, here at Dare to Imagine. I'm thankful to you and for your uh, faithfulness. I'm going to ask now that you turn with me to the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 9, and we're going to begin reading there at verse 18 through 19. And then we're going to skip down, beloved, to verse 23. 
and there you will find these words. The word of God says there in chapter 9, verse 18, it says, While he was saying this, a synagogue leader came and knelt before him and said, My daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her and she will live. Jesus got up and went to him, and so did his disciples. Then let's jump down here to verse 23. And the word of God says, when Jesus entered the house, the synagogue leader's house, and saw the noisy crowd, somebody text right now, the noisy crowd, and people playing pipes, the word of God says there in verse 24, he said, go away. Come on, text it right now. Go away. The girl is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. The text goes on and says there in verse 25, after the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took the girl by the hand and she got up. And then this is the shouting part right here in verse 26. It says news of this went through spread throughout all the region. Beloved, I want to talk today. I dealt with last week that I got to get my life back. And today I really want to deal with this subject of four ways, four ways that you can get your life back. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. Give him an emoji clap right now. I want you to share it right now on our different platforms, on Facebook, on YouTube. If you're watching on Church Online, I want you to share it right now with somebody because I believe that God's going to use this message right now to bless someone. If you have not become a Facebook subscriber, we encourage you to do so right now. Our goal is to get 1,000 Facebook uh, subscribers, uh, followers, and YouTube subscribers uh, on YouTube. We want to be able to increase our YouTube subscribers up to 1,000 by the end of June. Can you do that for me right now? Amen. I want to deal with this four ways to get your life back. Beloved, if we're really honest with ourselves, all of us who are here, we're in a particular season in our lives. We're in a season right now in which we are looking at the death toll that continues to rise. We're looking at the fact that when we turn on the television that more and more people are dying because of the coronavirus. And as I think about this season that we are in, I'm reminded that God is speaking even in this season, that God is using us even right now. And for so many of us, sometimes we tend to think that because we're going through a tough season, because we're going through a tough moment, that it seems like God has forgotten about us. But that's what I love here when you look at this text in Matthew chapter 9, is because what makes this text so powerful is the fact that even while things were becoming grim and even though things were not the way that people wanted them to be, that our God was still moving even in the midst. Yes, beloved, when you look here in this text and you look at verse 18, it's powerful because it says that while he was saying this, a synagogue leader came and knelt before Jesus and he said, my daughter has died, but come and put your hand on her and she will live. Yes, beloved, I want you to know that there are many of us who are watching right now, and we, we know that we're going through a storm. We just got some bad news from our doctor. We may have gotten some bad news from a spouse or a relative. We may have gotten some bad news from somebody in our family. But I want you to know that even right now, that you and I have the capacity to be able to tap into God like we've never tapped into God before. Yes, beloved, when you and I begin to understand how God is moving, in this season, I want you to know that I thank God right now that we are worshiping at home. I thank God that we are right now still worshiping God even in our living rooms, even some of y'all in y'all's bedrooms right now, but y'all better not fall asleep on me. Don't fall asleep. Because I want you to know that even though God is using this moment where we cannot come to this sanctuary and we can worship together, that I believe that God is trying to do something in this season. And what God is trying to do is to really come into your house. Come on and text that right now. We're letting God into your house. You see, the first point I want to share with you today is that if you and I are going to get through this coronavirus season, then you and I must let Jesus into our house. You know, it's deep when you think about it. Many of us, we don't really let Jesus into our house. 
In fact, what we really do is that we will come to church and we will play church and we will do church, but yet we don't let Jesus come into our house and let our house now become the church. Oh, beloved, but what's good news today is that right now the only way that you can worship God is not at 6610 Anderson Street, but the way in which you're worshiping God right now is in your house. And I dare you right now to give God some praise. I dare you right now to shout hallelujah. I dare you right now to bless his holy name. If God woke you up this morning, then give God some praise. If God put you in your right frame of mind, then give God some praise. If God God keeps making a way out of no way, then I dare you to stand up on your feet and give God some praise. Yes, the first thing that had to happen in order for death to leave this house is that they had to let Jesus come into the house. Yes, this synagogue leader, someone who was high up official, What's interesting about this text is that the synagogue leader had to let Jesus come in to the house. And you know it must have been a bad situation because the Bible shares with us that the synagogue leader just didn't let Jesus come into his house. But the text says that he knelt before him saying, my daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. Beloved, the text shares with us that Jesus got up, went with him, and so did his disciples. And then down here in verse 23, the word of God says, When Jesus entered the synagogue leader's house and saw the noisy crowd and people playing pipes, then he said, Go away. This girl is not dead, but she's asleep. Can I go ahead and talk to you today? Beloved, I want you to know that there are some people who you think are your friends, but they are really there because they want to see you die. <laughs> Don't you know that there are some people in your life that you thought really had your back? But they're really there because they don't want to see you succeed. They want you to lose your job. They want you to foreclose on your house. They want you to go crazy. But I rose this morning to tell somebody that you got to get rid of people in your life who don't really have your determination, have your spirit, have your fortitude, who do not have your purpose in mind. Every now and then, you got to get rid of your naysayers. You got to get rid of the people who want to try to do your own. You got to get rid of the people who don't have your best interests at heart. I remember some years ago, there was a person on Facebook. You know how it goes on Facebook. And, and a person who did me wrong, they tried to come back and be a friend of mine on Facebook. And it just got to the point, one of the best features that Facebook has is block. Oh, come on, type it right now, block. It's one of the best features. It's because this person, they tried to go all kind of ways. They wanted me to confirm their friendship. They came through my inbox, and then they had other people inboxing me. And guess what I did? I blocked them and everybody else who was trying to make me like that person. Because every now and then, beloved, you got to get rid of the naysayers who are in your life. You got to get rid of the people who don't mean any good for you in your life. Because it's the naysayers who will keep you dead. It's the naysayers who won't help you reach your potential. It's the naysayers who will try to destroy everything that God has for you in your life. Then there's this third point that I got to share with you. Is that once you let Jesus into your house, and once you get rid of the naysayers, you got to do something. That is, you got to let Jesus do his job. That's the third point right there. You got to let Jesus do his job. Now, I know this is going to be difficult for some of us. It's because we're so used to doing what we want to do. We got that, that Frank Sinatra kind of mentality. I'm going to do it my way. And your way is messing you up right now. <laughs> That's why you're in the situation you're in right now. And, and sometimes God has a way of saying, let me do my job. I mean, when you think about it, I mean, God does his best work when it's dark. God does his best work when we're going through a storm. God does his best work when it seems like all is lost. 
And that's why I want to share with somebody here today is that our God, that he wants you to let him do his job. Don't you know that he didn't need your help to create the moon and the stars? Don't you know he didn't need your help to create the world? Don't you know he didn't need your help to create you? Beloved, it's time for us to take our hands off and to let God do his job. I never forget there was this story that I remember hearing from an old preacher, and he talked about how there was this person who needed to be saved. They were, in fact, they were drowning in the ocean, and the lifeguard did something. The lifeguard did something that just really amazed me, and the lifeguard did not make his way to where the person was until they finally went down. Everybody on the beach, they were trying, they were concerned. They said, I don't understand. Why is it that you're not going to save the person? The lifeguard said, I got it. (laughs) There was somebody else who came and they said, I don't understand. We're going to get you fired. What's your name? What's your, what's your, 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 who's your boss? We want to get rid of you. And the lifeguard just simply said, I got it. Somebody else came along and said, I know who your boss is. I'm going to go and talk to your boss right now. And the man simply said, I got it. But when the person started to go down into the sea, that's when the lifeguard went into motion, went and got the person, went into the water and brought them back up and brought them back, resuscitated them and brought them back to life. After the person came back to life, the lifeguard finally said something to him. And the lifeguard said, As long as the person was fighting the water, I couldn't do my job. But the moment they finally gave up, that's when I could do my job. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here today. There are some of you right now, God wants to bless, but God can't move in your life because we won't let God do his job. The text shares with us that he came into the house. And when the man, when Jesus came into the man's house, The Bible shares with us here in this text. It says that he said to the people, go away. And after the crowd had been put outside, that he took the girl by the hand. And he, after he took her by the hand, that she got up. And the news of this spread throughout that region. Beloved, I want to give you this, and I'm done for the day. Is that if you are going to get your life back. Not only do you have to let Jesus into your house, not only do you have to get rid of the crowd and the naysayers, not only do you have to let Jesus do his job, but the last thing you and I got to do is that is to give God the praise. Oh, yes, there ought to be some people right now online who are thanking God right now for what he's done for you. Thanking God for how he keeps on making a way. Thanking God for how he keeps on opening doors. Thanking God how he keeps on blessing you and you and you and you and you. I want you to know, beloved, that God is moving right now. And what you and I have to do in the midst of this season is to give my God, who is also your God, praise. Because if we are going to get through this season, we've got to learn how to let God come into our house. And if you don't have a church home, if you don't have a person who you can call your pastor, then I want to be your pastor. I want to pray for you. I want to help you become everything that God has desired for you to be. All you have to do right now is to go to d2ic.org forward slash join. And become a part of this community because I want to help you. And I want to help you. And I want to help you get your life back. Why don't you join us here at Dare to Imagine and be a part of what the Lord is doing right here. That was an awesome worship experience, and I'm excited to uh, chop it up with Pastor Chick. Hey, Jay, what's up? What's up, Brad? <laughs> hey, Pastor KJ. What's up, Pastor? <laughs> so we have a couple questions for you. Really? And yeah, so Wallace, you want to kick it off? <laughs> I mean, my first question is, with a powerful word like that, how do you come up with your sermons? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, y'all, I pray. I mean, I really go before the Lord and 
it's really a process in which, you know, you really kind of think about the week, you think about the people, you think about what is God saying to you. I know this COVID-19 season is a tough season uh, for people, mm -hmm. and God really just gave me this message of that we're going to get through this. Yeah. And so this message this past Sunday um, was... Uh, just one that I really felt that people needed to hear mm -hmm. and I got to get my life back oh, yeah. is because That's folk, I know they're like, look, I've been stuck up in the house yeah. and uh, <laughs> I can't go anywhere, shut right. up in the house. Right. And it's like, what yeah. do I do? Exactly. And it's, yeah. look, you're going to get your life back. We're going to do it together. Right. So another question I have is regarding with this whole COVID-19 yeah. and just you like adapting with getting the word out. Like yeah. how is that transition? I mean, you know, this is like pretty cool. I mean, so to kind of share with you last Sunday, Mm -hmm. Somebody all the way from Brisbane, Australia. Get out. <laughs> like, like, dude, I was like, what? Australia in the house? And so, you know, this is just really a season where the church has to be innovative and be creative. Mm -hmm. And I've shared with people that we really have to be in a season now living out our name. Mm -hmm. Our name is Dare to Imagine. And sometimes we can kind of get comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I think God is like, nope, I'm not just going <laughs> to use y'all here at Mount Airy, right. but I'm going to use y'all to go to the world. And right. so I thank God that this is our headquarters and how God is using us to take the gospel to the world. Nice, nice. I was just, I got one more question. Yeah. As we uh, continue to go global, uh, can you just reflect on where we've been the last five years and where you see ourselves oh going? Um, this has been a journey. I mean, it, dare to imagine, I tell people it's a startup, which means that you got to do everything. And we just have great volunteers. We have a great congregation. Um, I could not do this all by myself. I mean, I have a great uh, support system. Uh, Kenya has done a phenomenal job. Our children, uh, they're very supportive. But also, we just have people who are watching and people who are part of this team. I mean, I think about Vessel. I mean, just to see how we have grown. Mm -hmm. I mean, we now got lights, camera, action, like six <laughs> yeah. I mean, We didn't have all this before. I still remember when we were packing those TVs and, and putting them up on the stands. I still remember the very first time when we got our first TV and Calvin Richardson came and helped me set up that TV. I mean, I remember Henry Williams, God bless his soul, uh, Lee Johnson, I mean, just so many, Lamar and Pam Nanton. I mean, just so many people, and Shali, and now we got Tierra, we got Max, and uh, we just have so many people who are really helping us out and really take this thing to the world. And also, we just got a great uh, administrative team. I want to thank Donna. I want to thank uh, Maurice. That's my main man. He's been rolling with me for a while. Uh, Janesh, there's been so many people, and so now God's really placed on my heart that we're going to take this thing to uh, just another level. And as we are here at this campus, I mean, um, the reality is tomorrow is a big day for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to be yeah. celebrating three years. Yeah, right here on this campus. Right, right here on this campus. <laughs> That's awesome. So I can't tell you how many churches we were contacted right, by. Right. You fit like a glove in that regard. You got something done in a in a relatively short period of time that few other organizations could have managed. Not just from the fundraising, but the fu the financing, all the hoops you have to jump through, the obstacles. You you guys did incredibly well. I think we picked the right church group to purchase this property. When God gave the vision to plan it. Um, you know, we ran with it, and you know they. Followed me out to Pepper, because um, we were looking at George Pepper and we walked around that property. <laughs> yeah. uh, we looked at some other properties and then we found this one, uh, St. Therese. Now, Dare to Imagine Campus, we were like, this is it. And so our goal was by Resurrection Sunday of this year uh, that we would have all the money and, mm -hmm. and it happened. Hey, Dare to Imagine, we finally did it. We have now purchased our new Dare to Imagine campus. I am so excited. I just wanna thank God, I wanna thank my family, I wanna thank you, I wanna thank Jerry and Ray Johnson, I wanna thank Bryn Mawr Trust Bank because they believed in our vision and they took a chance on this church that has only existed now for two years and five months. But look at what the Lord can do when you have tremendous faith. Love you much, and let's get ready to dare to imagine.
So dare to imagine, this is really an example of what happens when you just dare to imagine, when you believe God, nothing is impossible. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. So <laughs> go to d2ic.org forward slash join. We want you to be a part of what the Lord is doing here at Dare to Imagine Church. Um, I really believe that God is, is going to use us in a mighty way. And so I want you to join. I also want you to support what we're doing and helping churches get their tech grants and yeah. uh, support us um, by downloading our app. And y'all know the ring yeah. to it. What is it? All you have to do is a text what? D2I Church app. 77977. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, or you can just go to d2ic.org forward slash give. Yeah. Yeah. So like we always do, Pastor KJ, what? Ah, life like life better, better when you, you dare, dare to imagine. imagine. We'll right. see you next week.